Hello and welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. If you've ever been to Guilin, where I am now probably needs no introduction. So I am at Elephant Trunk Hill, so named because it looks like an elephant and you can kind of see its trunk here. Such a beautiful spot and just such a beautiful city. Over the last few days I've been here, I've just been constantly blown away by the beauty of this city. The dramatic scenery, the flowing rivers, how the city really comes alive at night. It's such a sweet city and I mean that very literally because I'm currently here mid-October just in time for the Osmanthus to bloom. So everywhere you walk you're just enveloped by this beautiful sweet fragrance. Yeah, I can smell it now. Actually, the name of this city, Guilin, literally translates to Forest of Osmanthus. After having been here, I can definitely confirm this to be true. So over the last few days, I've been talking with locals, understanding more about the cuisine of Guangxi. And it's really fascinating, actually, because as delicious as the food here is, Guangxi food is actually not counted as one of the main eight cuisines of China. And the reason for that is I've learned that Guangxi is known for borrowing elements of other cuisines rather than having its own distinct flavor. The food here is sour, said to be influenced by Guizhou in the north. The food here is spicy, said to be influenced by Hunan to the northeast. But the province that's said to have had the biggest influence on Guangxi's cuisine is Guangdong. Not only do these two provinces share a border, but also many geographic, climatic, cultural, and and dietary similarities too. So that's the topic we're going to be exploring today, the crossover between these two culinary cultures. For today's first food stop, we are en route to try a close cousin of Guangdong's famous chengfen. This is a chengfen here. It's basically folds of rice noodle goodness made by pouring rice flour batter onto a pan, adding toppings of choice, then it's steamed. Once steamed to perfection, it's scraped off the pan, loaded onto a plate and doused in this heavenly garlicky soy sauce. Here in Guangxi, we've got a similar concept, but but it's executed very differently. So our first food stop today is this place here. It's a very local breakfast stop and it's called Wangji Dranfen Dian. So you can probably guess it sells something called Dranfen. So Dranfen means rolled rice noodle, which is exactly what this is. It's also made from rice flour batter, which is poured onto this circular hot plate, then steamed for a few minutes. Once it's ready, it's carefully scraped off using this wooden implement and transferred to another circular surface. At this point, toppings are added. Lots of veggies with different colors and textures. Yum. What happens next will surprise you. Well, I guess not really surprise you because the name of this dish is to wrap up. And that's exactly what happens. With the aid of this wooden utensil, it's rolled up. All those toppings snug as a bug in a rug inside. It's then gently pushed off the stick and onto the plate. Ta-da! But that's not the end. We still need to visit the flavor station to add sauces. And spoiler alert, that's where the real flavor punch comes from. So this is fan chie jiang, right? Yes, fan chie jiang. And this is lao jiao jiang. Oh, lao jiao She also added some fresh red chili for good measure. And the boss just told me that this dish you can also find in Vietnam, which I guess isn't that surprising because Vietnam actually borders Guangxi. Here is my drum fin looking all glorious and rolled up, kind of like a rice roll croissant, if you know what I'm saying. And the smell I'm getting from it is very, um, very sour and kind of acidic and and zappy, I guess, is the right word for it. Very, very different from like a Cantonese chong fin because a Cantonese chong fin is usually more soy sauce related, very like kind of rich like soy salty flavor, but this is almost the complete opposite. So let's see how it tastes. I'm so excited to dig into this. By the way, this massive roll, three renminbi. Mm. That's really, really good. It tastes how it smells, very zappy. Got some chili on there as well. I loved how inside it was full of different textures from those veggies and the sauce was super light and refreshing and slightly acidic. I feel like this is the perfect healthy breakfast option. But now for something not so healthy, some deep fried yu tiao, which the boss told me to pair with another Guangxi breakfast specialty. This here, another example of culinary crossover. This is hu la tang. Hu la tang? Hu la tang is not Hunan. Yes, that's another one. Oh, okay. So, mi zuo de. Da mi, mu, fu And I've been instructed to dip some yu tiao into this hu la tang. It's definitely giving me yu tiao and congee vibe. Such a mix of food cultures here this morning. Mm. So the yotao is super crispy and soft on the inside and when you dip it in this, that soup has like a... What's the flavour? 
My first thought was this couldn't be any more different from the hula tang you can find in Henan province, which is rich, mushroomy, and salty. This here is a lot more delicate. It's subtle in flavor, slightly salty, but also slightly sweet. It kind of reminds me of a watery congee. And we all know that congee and yotiao are a match made in heaven. That concept holds true here too. Really, really good. But let's not forget about our half-eaten dranfen here. It's so cool to see how two different regions can have such a different take on a similar concept. But having said that, you can find the Cantonese-style changfen here in Guangxi. But what's interesting is that even these changfen have a uniquely Guangxi flair. The changfen served here in Guilin are all served with pickles and chili sauce. And when you have it all together, that salty changfen with that twang from the pickle and the spice from the chili sauce, oh, it's an absolute game changer. And it's definitely something I'm going to be doing in the future, just BYO pickles and just sprinkling it over my Cantonese style changfen. I just think it added such a freshness and a sourness to the dish. I'm loving in general that here in Guilin, pickles are added to everything. It's like the city of pickles. Talking of pickles, there's something I've been wanting to check out. So one thing I'm coming across a lot here in Guilin are these pickle stores. They're called Suan Ye. Suan means sour and Ye is the Cantonese word for things. So literally sour things. And there are so many different kinds of pickles. Here in Guilin, absolutely everything, any vegetable, even any fruit you can think of has been made into a pickle. Melon, apple, pineapple, mango, you name it, it's been pickled. Basically, you get a bowl, you can choose what pickles you want, she weighs it, and then you pay. <laughs> kind of like Froyo, but also very much not. <laughs> So I've got my big bowl of pickles here and I've been instructed you don't have to pair it with any kind of food, you can just eat it as it is. For too long, pickles have played the sidekick, but here in Guilin, they're giving main character energy. So since I've never tried pickled fruits before, that's what I'm gonna start with. First going in for some pickled papaya, which actually it wouldn't be too strange because I've had like Vietnamese papaya salad before, which is quite sour, so I guess it'll be like a similar concept. Oh, so good. Really refreshing. Man, I love a pickle. And it goes so well with that papaya, crunchy, sour, yum. Now this one should be interesting. It's pickled rock melon. So in Australia, we call this fruit rock melon. It's also called cantaloupe, depending on where you're from. In any case, I've never tried a pickle made from that fruit. So let's give it a go. It's really good because you've got the sweetness from that melon and then the sourness. Whereas with the papaya, it was more of like a sour in your face kind of feeling because that papaya itself is also quite sour. But the rock melon was like a different vibe. And now let's see this mango, what that's like. Oh, interesting. You've got that mango texture and a slight mango sweetness, but then the rest, as you can guess, it's sour. <laughs> Basically, it's just taking whatever texture that vegetable is, whatever vegetable that you've chosen, and infusing it with that pickly souriness. So I think the main thing that those vegetables bring to the table and those fruits is the texture. And in the case of the fruits, a little bit of sweetness, which I'm really enjoying, especially in that rock melon and that mango. You can really taste the sweetness, and it's absolutely delicious. I could live here in Guilin. Anyway, let's get back on track with the topic and continue to explore the culinary bonds between Guangxi and Guangdong. Next stop, roast goose. So my love of roast goose has been well documented. I tried it for the first time in Australia. I loved it. My family loved it. My dad really loved it. Oh my goodness. That's really good. Wow. That's really good. It's really good. Oh, I really like it. And then once I came to China, I actually made a pilgrimage to Shunda in Guangdong province to try it. I will never be the same. So you can imagine my surprise and delight when I learned that roast goose is actually one of Guangxi's top food specialties. So I've come here to Chunji Shao, or the place to go for roast goose. And I'm keen to see how Guangxi roast goose is different from Cantonese roast goose. I'm happy to put myself to this test. Chunji roast goose was first opened in Guilin in 1999, and since then it's spread to the rest of the province. It's known for combining the flavors of Guangdong with local taste, which is reflected in the menu. You've got these traditional Cantonese dim sum and dishes, but you've also got these other dishes that are sprinkled with red chili, which is definitely not a feature of Cantonese cuisine. Anyway, today we're here for one thing and one thing only, and that is of course the roast goose. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's see if my seasoned taste buds can discover any discernible differences. But first things first, how yum does this look? And would you just look at that beautiful, glazy looking goose? It's got a beautiful tan on it. <laughs> looks like it's just been to the beach. It looks crispy. It's got like that nice fatty layer under the skin as well, which I think is going to give it even more flavor. Let's get in there because I can't wait any longer. 
Mm. First impressions, it's very, very tender. You can see here, I've literally just bit through there. And sometimes when it comes to like roast meats, that can be quite difficult to do because it's quite tough. But this, my teeth just sank right into it, right through that fatty layer under the skin there, right through that flesh. And uh, let me now focus a bit more on the taste now that I've got the texture down. I have to say, it's a good roast goose. It's got a nice skin on it, slightly crispy. Crispier than the skin I remember having in Shunda, but I feel like the skin that I had in Shunda on the roast goose was like really, really flavorful. Like, I, there's nothing that will ever compete with that roast goose that I had. I would say this is a very elegant roast goose. I feel like this looks quite neat. You can really see distinctly the layers between the skin, the fat, and that lean meat. It pairs well with this um, sweet and sour sauce, which is a little bit, you know, acidic, which is good to cut through a bit of that fattiness. Um, it's good. I'm no roast goose expert. I aspire to be one day. Uh, and I'd say if you like roast goose, odds are you'll like this. I am enjoying it. And I uh, was not expecting to see it in Guilin. So I am both happy, surprised, and uh, satisfied. <laughs> so of course, to finish off this food adventure, we're gonna go grab some dessert. And it's actually a dessert that you can find both here in Guangxi and in Guangdong. And there's actually like a war between the two, it seems from what I've read online about who has the best one. So let's go check it out. This place is so local and oh, it smells like corn, like a really strong corn smell. And that's because this dessert involves corn. In fact, there's a massive bag of corn outside the front door. So what exactly is this, you might be asking? Well, it's called tang shui, literally sugar water, which is then filled with all manner of fruits and vegetables. Uh, I could see it also had bits of ginger in it as well, so I was definitely intrigued. So there we have it, two varieties of tang shui, one corn, one sweet potato. Definitely not the first ingredients that come to mind when I think of dessert, but let's give it a go. So I've personally never tried tang shui before, so I don't know where I fall on this Guangxi versus Guangdong tang shui debate. All I can do is try it and see how it tastes. So I've got two different varieties here. One is cold, this one is with corn inside, and this one is with sweet potato inside and it is warm. And you guys might know how much I love sweet potato, so I'm sure I am going to very much love this. But I think I'm gonna start with this one, the corn tang shui. So it looks to be sweet corn. First, I want to try some of that tang shui. Oh, very sweet and corny. <laughs> it literally has the flavor of corn. It's just water with sugar and corn, and it's cold. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to describe, and it, it's really, really delicious. I didn't think it would be but it is. I also love drinks with texture inside, so this corn was perfect, and I kind of saw it like a healthy alternative to boba. Now let's move on to our warm one over here with sweet potato. Now this, I'm interested to try. And much like sweet corn, sweet potato, in its name, it is sweet. So I think it's gonna go really well. Oh, that's very, very nice and warming because it's also got some ginger in there. So it's like very sweet from the sweet potato. This is also a good thing to have if you're a little bit hungry as well. Because look how much sweet potato you've got in there. But it's got like that gingery kind of tang to it. So it's sweet, gingery, and just very warm and hearty. This would be the perfect drink for winter. It's funny, like both these drinks, once I've drunk them, really make sense. And I can't believe I wouldn't have connected the dots before this. Well, this has definitely been a very, very successful day of eating. I've eaten so many beautiful, delicious foods, and every day I spend here in Guangxi, I'm learning more and more about the cuisine, and the more and more I'm falling in love with it. And tomorrow is a very exciting day, because after all these years, I am finally going to Yangshuo for the first time. So stick around for next week's video to see what I end up doing there, what I end up eating. And if you're still here at the end of this video, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could go ahead and click that little subscribe button. I put my heart and soul into these videos for you guys and it would be awesome to see your support through clicking that subscribe button. Anyway, thanks for joining and uh, I will see you next week from here in Guangxi province. Goodbye from Guilin! <laughs>